Good morning. Is Babylon invincible? Is Egypt invincible? Well, let's take a look today at our reading, Jeremiah 4, chapter 46, verses 20 to 28. Egypt is a very pretty heifer, but destruction comes, it comes from the north. Also, her mercenaries are in her midst like fat bulls, for they also are turned back. They have fled away together. They did not stand, for the day of their calamity had come upon them, the time of their punishment. Her noise shall go like a serpent, for they shall march with an army and come against her with axes like those who chop wood. They shall cut down her forest, says the Lord, though it cannot be searched, because they are innumerable and more numerous than grasshoppers. The daughter of Egypt shall be ashamed. She shall be delivered into the hand of the people of the north. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I will bring punishment on Ammon and No and Pharaoh and Egypt, with their gods and their kings, Pharaoh and those who trust in him. And I will deliver them into the hand of those who seek their lives, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and the hand of his servants. Afterward, it shall be inhabited as in the days of old, says the Lord. But do not fear, O my servant Jacob, and do not be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest, and be at ease. No one shall make him afraid. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, for I am with you. For I will make a complete end of all the nations to which I have driven you, but I will not make a complete end of you. I will rightly correct you, for I will not leave you wholly unpunished. Now to the Hebrews carried into captivity, hearing about the triumph of Babylon over Egypt might have been very disheartening, right? I mean, they probably were thinking as they went into captivity, well, there's still a chance that, you know, maybe the Egyptians will invade and we'll be able to get released and make some deals with the Egyptians. That might have been the way some of them were thinking. And then to hear that Babylon had absolutely uh, overrun the Egyptians and sent them back to Egypt, uh, to hear that that had happened and invade, even invading Egypt, that would have been potentially very disheartening for God's people led away into captivity. Were the gods of the Babylonians so superior that they could triumph over all the gods of all the different nations, all the different peoples? I don't think that was a message God wanted to send. See, Jeremiah's prophecies here remind God's people that God has not switched sides. He hasn't decided to give Babylon total control. Rather, Babylon will be ascendant for a time, for a period, for a period in time. But in the end, God will bring his people back from captivity. God will make a complete end of all nations, but not of his people. His people are coming back. His people will return. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for this hope, a message of hope, even for your people in captivity. You are steady. Your purposes don't change. Your plans, Lord, you, you continue to carry forward your plans. Thank you that we can realize that you are going to bring us out of captivity. If we're only faithful to you and just stand by, You're, the time of deliverance will come. You are a God who delivers and rescues. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for giving that message to your people, even your people led away into captivity when the kingdom of Judah had crashed and been unfaithful to you. Thank you, Lord, that we today can trust you that your character is steady and you're not going to leave us in uh, trouble and mayhem. You're not going to leave the church even in its present state. You're going to bring us to a better place. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So Babylon is not invincible. Egypt is not invincible. Far from it. God is going to bring a conclusion to this battle between good and evil. He didn't start the war between good and evil, but he is going to finish it. He's letting sin reveal itself and righteousness reveal itself. And again, that's why I say we call this the great controversy between good and evil, the great controversy between Christ and Satan. God is working, and he's going to be with you today in whatever you face. God be with you.